It is the end of the Gross Glockner Challenge and today I have to start making my way home. But before I do that, I have decided to take advantage of the fact that I am already out here in Europe and close to some countries that I've never been to before. I have made it this far, so I might as well keep going. There is a mountain road in Slovenia that I'm going to try and make it to today because I've never been before and I'm not quite done seeing mountains yet. So I am saying goodbye to my lovely apartment that I've barely used. I got a whole kitchen and I didn't use it. And I am gonna head south. I have just crossed the border into Slovenia, which is over there. And as you can see, there is mountains. So it's like midday, I'm gonna go up that and then I'm gonna turn around and come back. And then I'm gonna beeline back north. I don't know where I'm staying tonight. I should probably deal with that, but I seem to have absolutely no phone signal wherever I go. So I think I'm gonna have to wait until I get back into Germany before I book anything. Thanks, O2. Absolutely shit. I think this detour was a good idea. Look at the state of that. Oh my God. Immediately I'm having the best time, but also this is noticeable. This is a notable detail for if you want to come and do this pass, is that the tighter hairpins are all cobbled. So you're forced to do them slowly and they are really, really tight. Not slippery, just uncomfortable. I imagine if it's wet, they'd be slippery. But every single hairpin is cobbled, as you can see. Look at that. Anyway, there's a castle here. I was supposed to read up on the history of this and I didn't, so I will update when I find out. I think there's a lot of really um, dark history to this location, so I'm looking forward to reading about it. I am heading back down the other side of the mountain now. Um, I'm probably gonna turn around and just go back the way I came rather than doing the rest of the pass, even though it is really, really fun. I am conscious of the clock ticking, so I'll just do the same thing twice, that's fine. I don't think it's gonna go up again. But I did just go past what looks like a cave. So obviously I'm gonna go in that, obviously. It's right here. It looks hella spooky. Like a weird little man-made cave. I mean, you wouldn't not do that, would you? Oh, mate. This is hella spooky. It just keeps going. There's a light over there, it goes round. Mate, no. I guess it just goes through. <laughs> I guess it just goes through what this is. Maybe it ends next to where I parked. Maybe that's all it is. Oh my God, it is. 1916. Do I wanna, do I wanna walk up it from this end? No, not really, I don't. We'll have a little look. I reckon I could probably ride the car now I'm up through this lot. Spooky. Oh, something dripped on my head. Well, that's that. Ooh. So beautiful. I have to admit, this, this is perfect for this pass. This is a really difficult pass. It's a lot of cobblestones, it's a lot of gravel, it's a lot of patchy road work. And it's not a challenge on this. I am gliding up and down effortlessly and I'm having a really, really good time. And I know if I came down here on my bike, I would probably be crying. And I have noticed like this is a mountain pass as normally they're covered in sports bikes. I haven't seen a sports bike on this road. I have seen a lot of GSs and a lot of people walking. Um, 
I don't feel limited by this at all. I'm having a really, really great time. obligations fulfilled and Google said that this border crossing was closed due to landslide and I'm calling bullshit there. It is absolutely open, thank god because it's the only one that doesn't involve motorways and I am not paying for another country's lot of motorways. It is expensive. Anyway, moving on. This leg of the journey is taking so long. I booked a place to stay and I don't even think I'm going to get there until like 8 o'clock and I've just pulled over to do the quickest outfit change because I think I've run out of luck with the weather. This is where I've come from. This is where I'm going and it keeps flashing so that's dramatic. Uh, I just want to get there and go to bed and I haven't even had food. I am 20 miles away from my stop for the night and it has been horrendous. I will tell you about it later. Right now I'm trying to figure out what pizza I want to eat that will best make up for the last six hours of my life. I don't speak enough German for this, but I think if I get the most expensive one, that'll be fine, right? Sure. Yay. Good morning from beautiful Germany again. Please excuse the state of me. Um, yesterday was long. It's now the following day. It's now the last day of this trip. It's the home stretch. I just have to get back to Dieppe to the ferry port. Yesterday was ambitious and I'm really, really glad that I did it. Slovenia was incredible and it's on my list. I absolutely have to go back there with more time. Um, but what it did mean was that I had to get back north as quickly as I could. Um, so I ended up doing motorways and because I was doing motorways, I went through Austria because I'd already paid the fee to use the Austrian motorways. I didn't want to go through Italy and use motorways in Italy, which would look much the same and pay to use the motorways in Italy. So not as many countries as I would have liked to have gone through, but it just came down to time and money saving in the end for the rest of yesterday. I didn't leave Slovenia until like two o'clock in the afternoon and I had to get through Austria, which it's actually slower than one might expect. I've never seen so many roadworks in my life. And then when I got to Germany, and one would expect Germany to be quite quick as well, it was not. Um, there were extreme weather warnings for thunderstorms and I did pull over and put my waterproof kit on and I did get rained on, but it wasn't that bad. It wasn't bad enough that my sat nav took me off the motorway and through the middle of bloody Munich instead of going on the motorway because it decided that the motorway wasn't safe. It took me so, long like for god's sake let me make my own choices like i even put in the sat nav like just stay on the motorways i directed it back to the motorways and i was going along and it was like no no you want to go through the city and this wasn't the sat nav the sat nav just reads what the phone said this was apple maps apple maps you're a dick anyway i have the same 560 miles to do that i had to do on the first day out here which wasn't that bad um i have a midnight ferry crossing which is gonna suck um so i have i have 12 hours to do 560 miles i'm probably just gonna sit on the motorway again because it's easy and because i can switch my brain off and just go with the traffic I do need to find somewhere to get drinks and food because I didn't look after myself yesterday. The only thing I put in my body yesterday was that pizza. Um, I've got a big headache. I need coffee <laughs> and I need to actually drink some water today or I'm going to shrivel up and that'll be it. But let's just enjoy peaceful Germany. I'm not jumping straight on the motorway. I'm going to go and do these little foresty back roads because they are beautiful. They soothe my soul. And yeah, I deserve soul soothing for for half an hour before I join the Monday morning commuter traffic. I 
went hard on the breakfast. Yay. So there was me trying to make some progress and stuck in a German traffic jam. And if you've never been to Germany during a traffic jam, this is what they do. They split so that the emergency services can get through easily to get to whatever's happening over there. And all the motorcyclists can get to the front, get out of the way, and then just hang out and wait. Which is so much better than sitting in traffic, dawdling along, start stopping. And also I've caught up with some other can -Ams. So yeah, I, I have no idea how much of a delay this is gonna give me, but whatever it is, what it is, I've got some iced tea, I've got some snacks. I apparently have phone signal, so I don't care. Might even have a nap on the side of the road. Aw, oh, mate, I want to be a helicopter pilot. What a job. miles to go. I don't mind because this is comfortable. The only thing I wish is that this and this didn't interfere with each other so badly that I can't listen to music. That is annoying, but at least I know where I'm going. I will never stop complaining about this, even though it has actually saved my ass. So, yeah. Beautiful, clean, French motorways. I tell you what, the Europeans know how to do motorways. The British, absolutely not. Onwards. I had to get changed again because it is disgusting outside and all of the motorway service stations seem to be like under construction. So this is the first place where I've actually been able to sit down and get a hot meal. I'm not happy about it either, but it's five o'clock and I'm absolutely starving. Here we go, the end of the trip. Back to England. I uh, will probably get back to my house at 5 a.m. I'm home. It was about a thousand miles in two days. I got in at five o'clock, I had a bath, I went back to bed, and then later in the day, I took the can on back to offshore performance and I picked my car up and now it's back to normality. The trip overall was amazing. It was one that I was quite nervous about for a while. I was nervous to be doing a trip on somebody else's bike and on a bike that I'm not completely familiar with, but the Can-Am was fantastic. It didn't miss a beat the whole time. It was comfortable, it was fun. It was just a really, really enjoyable trip. I think we covered two and a half thousand miles in the six days that I was over there and there was, there was nothing unpleasant about it at all. Yes, the weather was a little bit questionable at times, but I was lucky enough to be able to take two outfits with me. So I had my winter outfit and I had a summer jacket and jeans as well. There's enough storage on the can now without completely overloading it to take two outfits as well as everything that you need for a week. So it was really, really great. And I would be curious to see how much further I could take one of those and what else you could throw out the can am and see what it'll cope with. I reckon you could do quite a lot with that bike. I am extremely grateful to Offshore Performance and can -Am for giving me the opportunity to go over and experience that and enjoy all those miles on their bike. I had an amazing time. The bike has gone back in um, a bit of a state. It's very, very dirty, um, but I know it's going to get licked after. Not by me, though. <laughs> by somebody else. I'm not even going to think about the state of my own bikes because I haven't washed Pinky since I got back from Iceland, so... The can is lucky to be going back to someone who's going to look after it because I am a terrible human. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this series. It's fun to do something completely different every once in a while. So I hope it's been educational and entertaining for you. And if you have any questions about my experience or about the bike, please let me know in the comments. I will also be at the Goodwood Festival of Speed for the Saturday and the Sunday with the can stand. So you can come and see me there. You can see the bike that I took to the Grosko the Challenge and you can quiz me all you want. Just don't ask me any hard questions.
But for now, that is it. Don't know what I'm doing next, but I will see you guys very soon. Goodbye.